morning, BBC Houston. It's good to see you here this morning. Would you rise to your feet as we open up in a word of prayer before we begin? If you're tuning in online, we welcome you this morning. God, we thank you, Lord, as we're here gathered, Lord, wherever it may be. God, here in this house, Lord, or in our homes, God, in our living rooms, God, we ask that your presence would invade this place, Father, as we just give you praise and worship this morning, Lord. Lord, you are worthy, 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 God. You've continued to allow us to have breath in our lungs, so this morning we choose to do that for you, Father. We bless your name, in Jesus' name.
Shame. 
the great I am. Father, there's nothing, Lord God, that you don't know. Because all things, Lord God, you have a plan and purpose. God, we thank you, Lord, before even the world began, Lord, you knew. And every word that was spoken, Lord God, was who you are. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, that we get to praise you. None that is worthy, but only you and you alone, God.
Praise God that we now become the children of God because the wonderful act of sacrifice that the Lord Jesus Christ has done on the cross and on the way to the cross so we can be restored, we can be healed, we can be transformed to be the people of God. And this morning, the first Sunday of the month, we will take communion it's also called the Lord's Supper this is a sermon in image in picture that we see at what Jesus did he gave us his body he gave us his blood so we can be restored be healed in his name and in his power the Word of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26 said, For I receive from the Lord that which I also receive, deliver to you. That the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and we had give thanks. He broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. I 
What an act of love that our Lord have pour out His life, His blood, so we can be restored. The this blood is not just only for the people that now are saved, but for all. May the Lord help us as we take this communion. The power of resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ will manifest in our life, so we can be effective. Like in verse 26, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till He come. May God help us, and may the blessing of His body and His blood bring power, bring His presence to be with us as we go out and be witness for Him that we will bring thousands upon thousands of people into the kingdom to share the blessing that we have in our life. Would you stand with me as we take this communion together? Father, we thank you. Forgive us your only begotten Son. As a sacrifice for redemption of our life, Lord. We thank you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for give your precious blood, your body, so we can be healed, be restored, be transformed. For that, Lord, we thank you. Lord, as we take this bread and drink this cup, may all the benefit of your body and your blood will take effect in our life. We thank you, Lord. When he gave thanks, he broke it and said, take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You take the bread, a picture of his body that had been broken for us. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Take the cup and remember what Jesus did for us. And go out in his power to proclaim this wonderful good news that people can be saved and be restored. He said, drink it in remembrance of me. Would you take the bread? Thank you, Lord. Now may the resurrection power that have resurrected Jesus from the dead, the power of resurrection, Activate and take full effect in our life, Lord, so we can be a blessing to thousands of people. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Amen. Amen. At this time, let us continue to worship God through our giving and our offering. And let's just continue to have that worship towards God right now for what he did on the cross for us by sending his only begotten son, his one-of-a-kind son, to die for us. Because of our faith in Jesus and what he did on the cross for us, we have that assurance of eternity with our Heavenly Father. And let us give this time to the Lord because each day we should be worshiping God. Each day we should be singing our praises to him. Each day we should give 
our bodies as a living sacrifice to him because that is our spiritual act of worship. And so if you are here this morning and you'd like to give and continue to sow into the ministry here at VBC Houston, all that we ask you to do is just grab that offering envelope that is in front of you, put your offering in there, and if you are watching online or if you want to give through your phone, you can give by going to vbchouston.com and just click on that red give button in the upper right hand corner and you can give that way. And so praise God that we can all continue to be a part of what God is doing here because the reality is we aren't doing this by ourselves. It takes a team, a dream team, a group of faithful givers that we can continue to sow into the ministry here and continue to share the vision that God has given us for us to share with people out there that they should love God, love people, discover purpose, and change the world. And so at this time right now, let us bow our heads as we give this time to the Lord and lift up the offering and tithing to God. Father God, we come to you, God, with a heart of worship, God. We just declare in this place and everyone online just saying that, God, you are a God of love, a worship, of worship, and you are worthy, God, of just everything, our full sacrifice of praise and worship to you, God. We give this offering to you, God, and we just ask, God, that you will bless it, that you will use it, God, to expand your kingdom. And God, may we go out there with boldness to proclaim, God, what you did for us 2,000 years ago, God, when you sent your one and only son, God. Thank you, God, that through your son is forgiveness. Through your son, God, is redemption. Through your son, God, is power, is healing, God, is restoration, is forgiveness of sin. And God, we pray, God, for every person here, God, that you will bless them, God, in just every single area of their lives, God, that you will just meet them in their area of needs this week, God. We love you, God, and we just continue, God, to just smile and just give a heart of worship to you, God. You are our audience of one, God. We love you, and there's no one else that we would rather worship, God, but you. We thank you. In Jesus' name that we pray, amen, amen. So we have a few announcements to go over before we invite Pastor Khan up to share the message. If you are here with children, we just invite you to bring your child over to the other side in our COC where we will have our VBC Kids Ministry. Um, and so every morning, every Sunday, the kids gather together to worship God and learn um, the Bible story for the week. And it's just great to see their foundation of faith being built on Christ every single Sunday as they come in so enthusiastically and just wanting to learn everything about God and learn how to worship Him. And so praise God for that. And this is also a reminder that our Revival Conference 2021 is taking place next week. It's here already. So next week, from October the 15th, oh, actually, October 17th, 18th, and 19th, 17th through the 19th, is our revival conference, and that's from a Friday to Sunday. And so be in prayer for that. If you want more information about the conference, you can just see revivalconference.org, where you can get more details about the conference. And many of us here are participating in the 21 days of prayer and fasting leading up into the conference, so we are continuing to do that. So we just invite everyone to continue to pray and fast for the conference. And this week, we will focus in on praying for our church, VBC Houston, as well as our personal lives. So join us for that as we all gather together to just hear from God and just, you know, put down our physical needs. A lot of us are fasting or giving up something so that we can focus in on God, eliminate those distractions to focus in on God, because we know that when God is in the presence in our in the midst of things, he moves, right? So we're praying for that. And this is also a reminder that our Dream Team conference meeting uh, will take place here at VBC Houston after our 11 a.m. service. So join us for that. So if you have signed up to volunteer and be a part of the conference Dream Team, we'll provide details about the conference, what to expect, where to serve, and uh, your schedule, and who your team leads will be. So join us for that. A light lunch will be provided. So this is a very important meeting. So join us for that. So at this time, let us give a warm welcome to our senior pastor, Pastor Khan, as he shares a new series called Power. So let's give him a very warm welcome. Amen. Sorry, point of correction. Uh, the Revival Conference is on the 15th to the 17th, which you... Um, 
scratch that and put it back in. That it's happened in the 15 to the 17, Friday evening to Sunday evening. What a blessing for us to be in the house of God today. And I know that um, the heart of God is pleased when we align our life into the place that God can use us to expand His kingdom. And it's very powerful for us to know and realize that there is a powerful presence that God wants to grace us with, to empower us, to make us effective for the work of the kingdom. Because we approach what theologian and time a prophecy is study and declare that we in the very, very last time of the last time, the end time, because Jesus soon return. There's many things that is happening right now that has never happened before. Early this morning, I read a piece of news that um, Honduras which on United States to move their embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. That is another piece that is coming to the picture that when Jerusalem recognized again as the capital of Israel, and the temple will soon be rebuilt. And we know that that time is marked the time that Jesus will soon return for his church. And we know that this thing is moving so fast that we need to be hurry and uh, get in the game. Because before Jesus went back to heaven, he gave the church, give us a great commission. It's not a great suggestion, but great commission that we need to go out and preach this gospel to every nation and disciple them, disciple nation, not just people, but nation, to be a disciple of Christ. And that takes a lot of power to push back the kingdom of darkness, rescue people, and bring them into the kingdom of God. Last night, I had the opportunity to minister to the church in Vietnam uh, through VR Zoom. And hundreds of people get on and receive the blessing. And I have the opportunity to pray for people up until 1 o'clock this morning. <laughs> Because so many people need to be touched and healed. And in the midst of that, I met this uh, lady that 10 years ago, the Lord gave me a privilege to set her free from demon. She was demonized when she was very young, as a young lady. Um, she ran around naked in the city. Her parents were embarrassed about it. They have to build a cage to lock her in because she don't know what she's doing, don't have a right mind. And by the time that we ministered in Vietnam back in 2012, they brought her to the place that we ministered. And praise God, through the power of the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, we have set that lady free from demons. And she totally sang and lived a happy life the last 10 years. What a powerful, powerful picture to see. And now she and her husband serve the Lord. What a transformation from the victim of the work of the devil now become the minister of the gospel. And what it takes is the power of God the power of the name of Jesus, like we praise on this morning, to make this happen. The great commission 
without the power of the Holy Spirit cannot accomplish. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the power of God in order for us to fulfill the Great Commission. And I believe that we're in the last leg to the final round for us to fulfill the Great Commission because soon our Lord will return for His church. And when that time has happened, people cannot save anymore. The time, the dispensation of the church will end. The time of grace is end. And people will have no way to get saved. And the rest is will be eternal in hell. The lack of fire. But we, as the people of God, we have the mandate. We have the promise that if we understand, step in, receive, we will be empowered to be a powerful witness for the Lord Jesus, that we will bring many people into the kingdom. Because the end picture that Apostle John in the book of Revelation have been um, revealed and recorded for us. The people from every tongue, every tribe, every nation is gathered around the throne of God to praise Him. And I believe that in that crowd of thousands, of thousands, of thousands, of ten thousand, gathered around to praise God, we have the people who, through our life, through our witness, that they are there on that day to worship the Lord, mighty God, with us. And so my pray in this series and my heart desire is for all of you to step in. It's time for us to step in and receive what God has in store for us so we can bring thousands upon thousands of people into the kingdom. It's time for us to be serious because people is dying. Because the message that I prepared last night, we know that through this COVID-19, about four and a half million people have died because of COVID. And the people just there one day, infected, and then a few days later, they pass on. And many of them don't know the Lord. So they end their life here and begin the second life that is called death in a place of eternally absent of the presence of God. That's a place that people will be regret of what they have done and why they not receive Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. Because they don't know that Jesus already prepared a place for them. They are saved in Jesus, but they do not know so they can receive and have eternal life. Our job is to love the people into the kingdom of God. And we cannot do it without the power of the Holy Spirit. So this morning, as we start this series, I want to call you into something that is very serious, according to the heart of God. He wants lost people saved. He wants people that we see around us to be rich and be saved into the kingdom of God. Because the next breath, when they take their last breath, if they're not in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, they will be in hell. And that's a terrible place that Jesus has shown us, not to scare us, but to tell us the reality of life without God. Life that chooses to live without the presence of God. And it's not a good place to be. May God help us. I will press in. I know that um, 
You may see that your life right now is look good and enjoyable. But what a cost for us to tap in into the cause that the Lord Jesus Christ has come to this earth to do. The Son of Man come to save that which is lost. And He wants us, those who have been saved, go out and save people. The Bible teaches us that the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit is in us as individuals and as a church that will impact our world, not our own power and our own presence, but His power and His presence. So this morning, would you go with me to something that Jesus said as the last thing that He said before He went back to heaven, take up to heaven, ascend to heaven. It's in the gospel, I mean the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. I know that the scripture is very familiar with us. May the Holy Spirit help us to look at it new, impactful this morning. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit had come upon you. And you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Be a witness to me, or be Christ's witness. It's a task that God is calling us, Jesus is calling us, to represent Him, to witness for Him, to testify for Him that His salvation, His work, His blood that have shed on the way to the cross and on the cross, His work, and the power of God is have the power to transform life, is work. And Jesus truly the Christ, the resurrection one, that can give us eternal life. May God help us. The first thing I want to invite you to see this morning is the need of power. Because the task that Jesus has given to us, God did not ask his people to do something for his work without empower them, give them the ability to do it. This is spiritual work. And it takes spiritual power to do it. It is why they were asked to wait in Jerusalem until power from on high descended on them. And that's how the church began. That is our beginning. And we need to go back to that place, back to the basic of what our Christian life is. The life that yield to God and receive the breath of God. Just like when Adam was created by God out from dust, but lifeless until God breathed his breath into Adam, and Adam began to, in the main, moving and the living soul. In the same way, God wants to breathe his breath into us in the New Testament to bring life, to bring restoration in our life so we can be empowered to live according to what God has purposed for us. We need the power of God. The church today needs to avoid the misconception that we can equitably minister to our society today by our clever program and sophisticated material. We need the power of God. Just like the picture that I share with you, the testimony of that young lady, there's nothing can help her at that time. Just imagine a young girl running around the city naked because she's not herself. There's a present inside of her make her do that. And that present is not good present, it's evil. No amount of um, counseling can help her. No medication can help her. But the power of God. 
And we see that throughout our society today. Those who live without God, they make a fool out of themselves. They destroy their life to substance and things that they use. And it's destroyed them. Because they don't have the presence of God in them. We need to love on them. We need to look at them with compassion. And we need to go out and through the power of God, reach them and help them so they can be saved, be transformed into the life that God intended when he created us. In his image, in his gladness. So God wants us to seriously come into the place that we can receive the power that he promised so we can be effect, effective for the work of the kingdom of God. No religious ceremony can equip Christians to save the lost, but the power of God. Because it takes real power of the Holy Spirit power to empower us, to make us effective. I mentioned I pray for at least 50 people last night. They have all kinds of sickness. They're waiting, and I pray for them. Instantly, many people get healed. They have problems with their spine, and thousands of miles away, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, when I declare healing, they receive the healing. You can see people face it just lit up and they smile and say, Pastor, the pain is gone. I receive my healing. I have people who are touched by the Holy Spirit and their life is on the wave of restore and bless. My brothers and sisters, that kind of witness needs to manifest through our our city, our community. Because people need the presence and the power of God to touch their life. The New Testament church saw the baptism of the Holy Spirit as a normal experience for empowerment believers. We see that the apostles, they lay their hand on believers where they travel so the people can receive the Holy Spirit. It's what expected that all believers would seek the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And we want to see that happen too for our life and so we can share that blessing with other people. We need the power of God for transformation. On the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4 said, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. And the Spirit give them the utterance. What a picture. The invasion of the power of God, the Spirit of God into this planet Earth. And it's marked the first time that the Holy Spirit will come and live and stay inside a human body forever. In the Old Testament, God calls someone for a special task to be a judge, to be a king, or to be a priest for God. And when their job is finished, the Holy Spirit leaves. But here in the New Testament, we have a privilege that Jesus gave to us His Spirit and stay with us forever. And our human body, able to carry His presence to everywhere we go. Because he gave us a bigger task called the Great Commission. And it's a blessing for us to know that. Note that there are two things that has happened when the Holy Spirit has come upon the church. 
when Jesus baptized them in the Holy Spirit. It says, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Just like when God breathed his breath into Adam's nostril. Everything in him that is have made but without life come alive. I can picture that his heart is already in the cavity of his chest, but it's not moving. It's not pumping blood. There's no blood to pump. And all the organ and everything that is already in place, but no life, until the breath of God. We see here when the Holy Spirit come upon the church for the first time, 120 of them. The breath of God come, the Spirit of God came south from heaven as a rusting mighty wind. Feel them. I can picture on that first day when God breathed into Adam. What a powerful, the breath of God is coming to him and make everything inside of him come alive. Activate and come alive. In the same way, everything about us, our ministry, our calling, our life, will come alive when the breath of God, the Spirit of God, breathes on us. The second thing that we see here is the fire. And then there appeared to them the divine tongue as a fire. And one set upon each of them. God have enough for everyone on each of them. And I believe that this morning, God have a tongue of fire, tongue light, a tongue of fire for each and every one of us in this place. Why the symbol of fire? When the believer received the Holy Spirit. Because fire is the symbol of transformation. Fire can change things. Fire change whatever is touched. Fire go, wherever it go, it change the landscape, it change the things around it. When I went to big islands in Hawaii, we have the opportunity to go and see the place where the lava out from the volcano flow. Everywhere it go, it changes the landscape. Even islands is grow bigger because of the lava. Everything it changed when the fire flow. That's why the picture of the Holy Spirit come upon the church as fire, because it took the fire of God's Spirit to unite the believer into a powerful group of people called the church. Because we are so much different from each other. But it's like the Spirit of God come and help us share the same thing. Share the Spirit of God so we can be united. So we can come together for the cause that God is calling us. Just like in the Old Testament when the people tried to build the tablet. Tower of Babel. The scripture tells us that when God looked down and he said, there's a group of people speak the same language and now they're determined to do one thing. There's nothing can stop them. God implied that even God cannot stop when that three component is there. But of course, he has the power to come and he changed the language. And they cannot speak the same language anymore. That's why they disperse everywhere and spread throughout the earth. Because their cause is not according to the word of God. God said, be fruitful and multiply and fill this earth. They want to come back to one place and to build a town to touch God, touch heaven. God said, no. But that three component is very important that we see if there's one group of people speak the same language, 
and they united to do one thing that they wanted to do. There's nothing can stop them. That's why Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit. And the first thing that the Holy Spirit has come is to unite us, take control of our tongue. So we begin to speak the language of heaven so we can accomplish the task that he gave it to us. Now, this is a wonderful thing that we can see here. On the day of Pentecost, the fire fell on them. And after the day of Pentecost, the whole city filled that fire because the fire of God is rest upon each and every one. And they impact the city. Not long after that, the leader of the Jews, they called the apostle in and they say, we forbid you to preach and teach about this new way. But you now have filled the city with your teaching. What a powerful picture for us to see. The power of God through this group of people, 120 of them, have impacted the city, Jerusalem, and then they spread throughout Judea. And then Philip brought it to Samaria. Samaria had been impacted for the kingdom of God, and many people come into the world. And then out of that, we see the church in Antioch send out Paul and Barnabas. And they bring the gospel throughout Southeast Asia, I mean South Asia Minor. And then throughout the, the, the place now, it's called Europe, that the gospel begins to expand and the kingdom of God expand through the power of the Holy Spirit on them. Be my witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, in Judea, and to the end of the earth. What an expansion that we can see here. Do you want your loved one to be saved? Do you want your relative to be saved, to be rich for God? You need to be empowered. You want your school to be rich for God? You need to be empowered so you can be a powerful witness for him. Because history is full of story of spirit-filled people who have transformed society. Go back to history and you read it. Someone have a wonderful invention. Someone have started something that is wonderful, impact and transform the society. You can pinpoint that because they are filled with the Holy Spirit. Do you know that hospital has been established by the church? Did you know that often it's established by the church? And do you know that most of major university in this country is established by Christian? It's impactful. It's powerful impact. The society. Because people are filled with the Holy Spirit. While Satan can stand against program. He cannot stand against the presence of God. So we need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, the power of God, that we can make an impact. We can be effective for the kingdom of God. Society won't be transformed until the church is transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. If not, we just light them. We have nothing to give but suck in into the flow of the society. Means that we come in just like salt. When sprinkle into the society, we reserve it. Like salt have reserved food, meat, and let it allow it to be decay. We like light. But when God places us in the place of darkness, that place no longer in darkness anymore because the lights have come. God wants us to be effective for the kingdom of God and bring many people into the kingdom. The second thing that we see here that we need to be empowered to be effective is the need of the presence of God. The fire that we have seen in verse 3, then there 
appear to them divided tongue as a fire, and one set upon each other of them. The scripture tell us when the day the tabernacle, which is the temple, worship God in the tent. It's called tabernacle. When it's dedicated, the fire of God has fell and consumed the sacrifice. As God's signature and say, I approve this place to be a place that can worship me. When Moses dedicated the tabernacle, supernatural fire from heaven, the presence of God fell on the sacrifice. And there's a picture that we see here. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You see, just like the fire fell on the sacrifice when the tabernacle is dedicated, our body, our life, can receive the fire as a picture here that now our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is, who is in you, in us. What a picture that now we become the tabernacle, the place that we can worship God, a place that we can carry the presence of God everywhere we go. Touch life, bring the presence of God into situation that can transform people, can help them. Picture with me when you walk into a situation that is dark, thing that is terrible. You brought the presence of God into that place, things begin to move and change. We see thousands of one thousand of testimonies that people's life have been transformed. And we can look back into history and we see that happen. The people who so, so bad, touched by the power of God, their life is changed. We see thousands of thousands of people who are drug addicts have been reformed, restored because of the power of God have touched them. They so addicted and they want to get the fix. They go out to buy drug, crack, cocaine. With the money that they cannot earn, but they steal from their parents, from their house, from people around them, sometimes killing people to get money to go and get some crack to get a fix. But when God transformed them, the pastor of the church that I ministered for last night, he's a gambler, addicted. He steal everything that he can put his hand on from his parents, from his wife, even steal the formula from his baby so he can go out and gamble. But when the gospel preached to him through the power of the Holy Spirit, his life is transformed. Now he becomes a pastor, the leader of 38 churches in Vietnam. What a transformation. Because the presence of God minister to him through believers, through us, when we bring the gospel, not just in word, but in action, in power, manifest of the power of the Holy Spirit. This life like that, it changed. Two years ago, I met a group of drug addicts now reform. I heard a testimony that I cried when I heard that. This young man come up and in front of thousands of people, look to his wife and say, honey, in this place, with that, this many people, I want to ask you to forgive me 
I asked before, but I want to do it publicly. Forgive me for the time that I kick you in the stomach when you carry our baby, because I demand money from you so I can go out and buy drugs. He cried when he d r e w in that, kneeled down before his wife and asked for forgiveness. That young man now is a pastor of one of the largest church in North Vietnam. Story lineup can repeat after the people are touched and filled with the Holy Spirit. They minister to. They're able to receive that power to transform their life. Now here in the United States, we have drug addict all over. We see people who are addicted to things, to porn, to pornography, to all kind of things. They're addicted to all kind of. Substance that have been bound them. Young people addicted to video game, that they spend hours and hours on that, and it's corrupt their mind. You know the pornography when people look at. It have the power to even reshape their brain, impact them forever. That individual will never able to see. Their wife, their husband, in the way that God have intended, totally mess up their life because of all the things that is going on. But it takes the power of God to transform their mind and reshape their life. And we see that those who have been set free, they have a normal life and they're able to have a wonderful marriage. That kind of power and presence. Need to be in our lives so we can carry the gospel of power to touch people's lives, to transform life. What a good cause! May God help us that we will get in and receive the presence of God. The second picture that we see that when the temple is a permanent place, when King David received the plan from God. And he re- repair the material, but because he's a warrior, his hand already um, shed blood. God said, "No, you cannot build it, but your son will build it." So King Solomon finished the temple, and on the day of dedication, Second Chronicle chapter seven verse one said, "When Solomon has finished praying." The fire come down from heaven and consume the burnt offering, and the sacrifice, and the glory of the Lord fill the temple. The same picture. The look back in First Corinthians chapter three verse sixteen. Do you not know that you are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwell in you? The same picture when the fire of God, supernatural fire from heaven. Come and consume the sacrifice. God say, "This is stem approval. This is the place that people can worship me. And every prayer come from this house. I will listen and I will answer when they call on me. In the same way, today we are the temple of God. That spirit of God dwell in us. When the fire of God is come upon the church." For the first time, in the first day of Pentecost, and we see that is signifying the approval of God on our life. That today, the people of God can be the temple of the Holy Spirit, and we can have the presence, the power of the Holy Spirit with us, and we can carry that. In the process, I'm translating the song, the champion. The first phase from that song is say, "It took me so long to know it, and it took me even longer." I try to translate that into Vietnamese so we can introduce to the revival conference to receive this wonderful revelation. That God have chosen me to carry His victory. What a privilege! What a privilege for us to now that we can be the house 
Our body can be the house, can be the temple, can be a tabernacle. That the Spirit of God can be in us, with us, and empower us so we can carry His presence, carry His victory everywhere we go. To the point that when we declare with a shout, war coming down. And when we declare with a shout, miracle can happen because the presence and the power of God is in us. I know that that song is very prophetic for our generation, for your generation, because we did not realize that God has a wonderful plan, the restoration of the original plan of God, that Adam and Eve have been messed up. The presence of God in them, because God has breathed his breath in Adam, but because of Adam's sin of the sin of disobedience, the Spirit of God can no longer inhuman. But God has a plan of restoration through salvation, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Our body used to be housing sin and bad things. Our mind has been housed the darkest thing that we can imagine. But through the blood of Jesus, we can be sanctified, we can be forgiven, and our body now is able and qualified to be filled with the presence of God, the Holy God. To be filled with the presence of God through the Holy Spirit. What a picture. You know, sometimes when we look at our body, we can say things that is contrary to the word of God. Do you know? Paul said, do you not know that you are the temple of God? What a privilege. God said there is no temple that man can build for him that is worthy for him to dwell. But he chose to dwell in with us in our body. That we can carry the presence of God. We're the carrier of the presence of God and the power of God everywhere we go. When people need the power of God to touch them, we bring it to them. When we walk and we touch, we lay hand on them. When we speak the word, the power of God begins to flow and touch them and transform their life because we carry the power and the presence of God with us. Did you see it? What a privilege that we have. God presence in, in the church. On the first day, the church is born. And God presence. will be with us when we willing, when we understand, and when we receive. Back to the song champion. The writer depicts a picture that you should try to earn it. I try to earn it. But now I'm no longer strive for us. Because it's given. Because God wants to give us the privilege that we are called to carry His victory. So God can move through us to touch the people that He loves. The people that is not lovable, but through His power and through us. He can reach them and draw them back so he can restore their life. They can step into the destiny that God has for their life. My brother and sisters, that is a wonderful picture that we need to remind it today. So we need the power of God because of the past. We need the presence of God because now God has chosen to give us a wonderful blessing 
that His presence can be with us forever through the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God brings both presence and power. A Spirit-filled believer has both presence and power. The Spirit-filled church has both presence and power. And what the world needs today is both God's presence and power. And you can have it today. If you understand for the first time, today you can receive it. So you can be a powerful witness for God. You may ask how. Let me share with you a couple of steps for us, for you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because there is a need to appropriate the power and the presence of God. And that is the blessing, the promise that God the Father had promised. That in the last day, He will pour out His Spirit upon our flesh. From His servant, from His maiden. So we all can be filled with God's power and God's presence. How we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. First, you need to repent. Repent of things that are um, too ignorant that you have in the past. Acts chapter 17, verse 30 said, In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now He commands all people everywhere to repent. In Acts 2, 38, Peter replied, Repent and baptize every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin." And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit to repent. Think that is wrong, sin in your life. Get yourself ready. Through the blood of Jesus, you are sanctified and ready that your body now can be the temple that the Spirit of God will dwell and manifest to the fullness. Step number two, you need to renounce evil power that you have been in touch or thing that you have involved in the past. Acts chapter 19 verse 18 to 19 said, many of those who believe now came and openly confessed their evil deed. Verse 19, a number who had practiced sorcery brought their scroll together and burned them publicly. When they calculate the values of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 chapmas. They repent, the people repent of their, or renounce their evil power. We have people nowadays have charms, have voodoo, have mullet in, in their life that they need to renounce and get themselves ready to receive the power and the presence of God. Number three, you need to thirst after God. Jesus said in John chapter 7, verse 37 to 38, said, If any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believe in me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. When we thirst after when you say, God, I need you. I want to drink from you. And when the Holy Spirit of God comes into your life, now inside of you, many rivers, picture of the power of God, the presence of God is so packed inside of you that from your innermost being can flow rivers of life that can touch people, can heal people, can bring life to them. I have a privilege to allow this wonderful blessing that I'm carrying inside of me, the rivers of living water of God, to pour out and touch life. 
I have come to a place that people in the place that they're ready to die through car accident. The liver is so damaged that it's bleeding, and the hospital they cannot help stop the bleeding. I will usher in because I'm a minister. Go into ICU, stand next to that bed, and allow the rivers of living water, the presence of God, pour out to touch that individual. A couple of minutes later, when I'm in the waiting room, they come out. And they said they just do the ultrasound and saw that the bleeding in the liver stopped. Three days later, a person would check out from the hospital. Inside of us, potentially, can have rivers, plural, rivers of living water. Picture of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit that can flow, can touch people, can transform people, to heal people, to set them free, and is available. So thirst after God. Step number four: ask in faith. God already promised. Now in faith, you just ask. Luke chapter 11 verse 13. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? When you save, the inner work of the Holy Spirit come to you automatically to give you a new birth, to seal you. For salvation. The power of the Holy Spirit can come upon you only when you ask for it. Because God will not give His Spirit, His power to those who don't want to receive it. So ask, and you will receive. And Jesus give us that blessing and say, in His name you can ask, and you will receive so your joy may be full. Step number five, drink. Again, on the last and great day of the fish, Jesus stood up and said in a loud voice, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Let drink today. Let drink up today. Not liquor, but the Holy Spirit. And it's interesting, in all English, spirit with low S. It's talking about liquor, alcohol. Paul said, do not get drunk with small s spirit. Why? But be filled with the capital spirit, the spirit of God. May God help us today. Those who are hungry, those who thirst, will come and drink. And the last thing is you receive. By faith, you receive just like salvation you receive. You receive the filling of the Holy Spirit the power of God and the presence of God. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Therefore I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them, and they shall be granted to you. Hand will be laid on you today when you respond. And when the power of God begins to touch you and fill you, you begin to feel something that begins to bubble up inside of you. And it's come up, come up. And you feel like your tongue is beginning to move. Yield to God. God may give you the heaven language 
for you to become your prayer language, to become the language that you can use to edify yourself, to make you strong, to build you up, so you're ready to release the power and the presence of God every time that you minister to people. May the presence, may the power of the Holy Spirit come upon you through the baptism of the Holy Spirit this morning. If you're hungry, if you want it, you can come to receive today. And for those of you who have received this before, but it's been subsided in your life, time to be refilled so you can be ready to be a witness for Jesus, first for your family, your relative, to your community, to the people that you don't like, like the Samaritan people is the Jews don't want to associate with them, even don't want to go through their town, the Samaritan, and to the end of the earth. If you're hungry this morning and you want to receive, you can respond to this auto call this morning. I want to pray for you. I want to ask that the Holy Spirit will come upon you like the apostle and the church, those who have received before, able to lay hand on those who are hungry and ask, and able to receive. And that's a message that I want to share with you and teach you this morning to prepare you for the wonderful work that God is calling each and every, every one of us, the task that He's looking for in this city through this church is those who be witness for Him. Do we have any people in this place who want to be a witness for Christ? Come and receive the empowerment this morning. Would you rise and let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your calling in our life. Thank you, Lord, for the first calling. It's to come to receive salvation. And the calling to come, follow me, and I will make you a fish of men. And the calling to be a witness for you. So we can reach people. We can bring people into the kingdom. Save them from eternal hell. Rescue them. Help them to become people of God. Save, sanctify, and reserve forever. We thank you, Lord, for your calling in our life. And thank you, Lord, for the empowerment that we can receive so we can do the task, the work, the great commission can be fulfilled through your power in our life, Lord. We thank you. May you pour out your spirit upon those who are hungry this morning, those who thirst. You will give them a drink that will eternally satisfy them and cause from that drink rivers of living water ready to flow from them to the thousand of life. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. Anyone ready and receive, want to receive, you can run up front. We don't have much time. And I want to minister to you and want to impart the blessing that we can receive this morning before you leave. In church, God bless you. Continue to walk in the power and the presence of God and go out there to be a blessing to your family, your community. And together we impact the city and nation for God. God bless you and be with you in Jesus' name.